There could be in the kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together, ooky, the Adams family. Greetings from Casa Goring, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Well, well, well. <laughs> Will we ever get any peace is the question. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think we know the answer. It's a two-letter word beginning with N. However, A. B. Lynn wants to know, do you think the king is going to relent and let Harry come back? I believe he puts the monarchy before everything else. Mm. Well... <clears throat> I know who's asked this question, and I think it's a very good question. Uh, you know, Harry and his people, and Meghan's people, and his people, have been putting out a lot of guff recently. Oh, I'm willing to come back and join the firm half in, half out. Well, Better still, three quarter out, quarter in. I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be the other. I'm married to a prince and he's going to become a regent. Yes, he is. I'm going to be the regentess. Cock my finger and take. Tea. I'm so classy. Well, they, of course, you know, he's, this is a very calculated and deliberate game plan to take advantage of the illness of his father and his sister-in-law and to big himself up and to remind everybody that he is relevant. Well, people at the palace have been careful to make it clear to the press that there is not a snowball's chance in hell of Harry returning to the fold as a working royal. They have made it absolutely clear that this is not a possibility. That means it is being done officially, but silently or covertly. According to some of the publications with whom the palace has been in touch. The king is firmly of the opinion that there is no way back for Harry as a working royal. And I am advised privately that if the king ever tried to back away from that position, William would make sure there was all hell to pay. But Charles isn't going to do that because Charles and William are working in tandem. There is no possibility of Harry repairing his relationship with the family as long as he is with Megan. And you notice she has been wearing a new in version of the engagement ring. Oh, I'm so classy. I'm so classy. I've got class. I've just got to flash my ring. Got to flash my ring. Well, the ring is being flashed for the first time in a year because they are in dire straits. Their relationship 
is a reflective of their dire straits. You know, Harry said when there is sickness, families come together. Well, not his and certainly not hers, because her father has had two strokes, you no, know, one heart, two, two heart attacks and one stroke. They live three hours away from him and they've never bothered to get in touch. Not even a rotten rose, much less a phone call. Of course, Harry made sure he came over. And you notice there was a version making the news that Harry wished to go to Sandringham. Well, how does that work? How could he have gone to Sandringham when he had to get back to America to give out the wall to Peyton Award? Nothing they say or do ever adds up. And they think we're all such big imbeciles, imbeciles like them, that we can't do the math. There will be no half in there will be no half out. Harry's out. Charles is not relenting. Harry has made his bed. He's going to lie in it. Now, that doesn't mean that as a father, he's not open to continuing to improve relations between him and his son. But that's an entirely different thing. And yes, A. B. Lynn, who happens to be a very chic person, let's put it that way, she knows and I know that the king, the late queen, Prince William, she and I all put our duty before our self-indulgence. That's the difference between people like us and people like Harry and Meghan. Vera J says, what do you feel about the article in Vanity Fair that the Harkers <laughs> are mending their relationship with Kate Middleton and will return to royal duties? <laughs> well, this little piggy man to market and this little piggy flew high in the sky. <laughs> mm. You know, as soon as anything is listed in Vanity Fair and all of those rags, because they really are rags, I mean, I think it's really terrible. Because in the good old days, when Dominic Dunn used to do his articles and Vanity Fair was actually a serious and seriously glossy and glamorous magazine, incisive and relevant and not trivial and not déclassé the way it now is, you could rely on what they said. Now you can rely that whatever they say is utter rubbish. Where Harry and Meghan are concerned, it's a cut and paste job. First of all, she's not Kate Middleton. So, and it actually annoys that me as well as many other people that she is referred to as Kate Middleton and I'm sorry Vera G I don't mean to recriminate against you sorry I'm being very naughty and really sorry but it would be nice if people would call her Catherine Wales or Catherine Princess of Wales or the 
Princess of Wings. Just Catherine. But not Kate Middleton. She and her husband want her to be called Catherine, not Kate. And she hasn't been Kate Middleton for years. Also, there is no prospect of either Catherine or William mending fences with the Harkles jointly. My understanding is that as far as they are concerned, they would sooner, sooner chew on Stalin's bones than be near Megan. They absolutely despise her with good reason. I don't know if some of you have been with this channel long enough to remember that somebody from Givenchy got in touch and recounted what had happened at that fitting between Megan playing off the Mulrooney girl against three-year-old fat Princess Charlotte. Fat at three, <laughs> I ask you. I have said it before and I'm going to say it again. Any parent who loves her child or his child can forgive an injury done to himself or herself, but not to his or her child or children. I froze out somebody with whom I had been friends for 35 years, not because of the awful things she did to me, but because she involved my children. I do not think Catherine and William will ever forgive Megan because they know she is a wolf in wolf's clothing. <laughs> Little Red Riding Wood, I promise you I'm not a wolf. No, I'm a sheep. I'm very sheep. <laughs> They've got her measure. Utter, I mean, the Vanity Fair article, which I unfortunately had to look at to answer this question, is an insult to even an imbecile's intelligence. But then again, Meghan and Harry and their people rarely are arrogant enough to think that they're so clever and everybody else is so stupid that they can literally just puke out rubbish and everybody is going to say, oh, my goodness, isn't that wonderful philosophizing and great thoughts? No, it's not. Gina Morales says, <coughs> Sorry, Lady C, I remember when you published your Meghan and Harry book, you were literally the first person to call out Philip Schofield for his lack of integrity. What do you make of the male's report that his young lover's life has been wrecked by the affair, but he's banned from speaking about it? Well, I tell you, the first thing that comes to mind is put not thy faith in princes which is a biblical injunction, meaning that no matter how humble or ordinary a person you are, you should never revere people in superior positions because they are more privileged than you. Oh, you can respect someone who has shown himself to be 
more capable than you, but the disparity between the haves and the have-nots should never mean that the have-nots revere the haves just because they're haves. My investigations, and I'm not going to mention the name of the young man out of respect for him, but I know his name. Everybody in Fleet Street knows his name. He was very young and starstruck. He met Philip Schofield when Philip Schofield, no, he, his family, there was a family link between his family and Philip Schofield. And then he got Philip Schofield involved with something at the school, if I remember correctly. This is when he's 13 years old. So he was obviously starstruck. Well, you can say fine, you know, it's understandable. And we can't criticize or recriminate where he is concerned. And Philip Schofield played him beautifully. Now, I'm sorry, a man who's 40 years older than a young boy. Hmm. Deeply suspicious where I'm concerned. But he took him under his wing. And then, according to Philip Schofield, when he was on a, of age, of the age of consent, he did more than take him under his wing. That's Philip Schofield's version of events. And the young man was given lawyers by Philip Schofield. If I remember correctly, it was Mishkon Dorea. Very reputable law firm. Lord Mishkon represented Diana, Princess of Wales, in her divorce, along with Anthony Julius, who in those days was with Mishkon Dorea, if my memory serves me correctly, and I think it does. Philip Schofield had this young man totally besotted. And, you know, hero worship, it is incumbent upon the adult in the relationship, the mature party, mature in quotes, because plainly Philip Schofield was, and I'm being charitable when I say not mature, I think he is exploitative and I think he is, has proven in this circumstance to be dangerous because he encouraged this young man to be totally besotted with him. And then when the young man made his feelings clear at the National Television Awards, he dumped him, moved him on to another show, which shows the level of pull he had at ITV. But of course, we all know about how ITV works. Megan phones up Dame Carolyn McCall and says, Piers Morgan said that I'm a liar and I need him dismissed. And Dame Carolyn McCall, wonderful, marvellous CEO, so responsible, so ethical, calls in Piers Morgan and says, 
you're either going to apologize or you're out on your air. And she, of course, was involved with the whole business with Philip Schofield. But she's managed to dodge that bullet the way she dodges every other bullet because she's slipperier than an eel. And it has destroyed the young man's life because he has had all his dreams shattered. Philip Schofield encouraged him to believe that he could have a career in television. Mm. I think what Philip Schofield was really saying was, you can have a career in my television. But he forgot to use the my and led the guy up the garden path. And it's had a shattering effect on him. And they have come to a settlement for six figures, evidently, in which this unfortunate young man is not allowed to ever speak about what Philip Schofield did and didn't do. Disgraceful. I said it you're absolutely right, Gina Morales. I said at the time my Meghan and Harry book was being published that Philip Schofield had no integrity. He has no integrity. I think he is the scum of the earth. Right down there with one or two other really nasty pieces of work that I am familiar with. And actually, there could possibly be a reason why Philip Schofield was so desperate to defend Meghan and Harry. The courtesy of one shark for another. Elk Prof says, Lady C, I have learned that has been met with First Nations leaders in Canada and that he has set his sights on an envoy role in Canada, especially with its First Nations peoples. What a crazy loose cannon Harry is to offer to at least one First Nations leader to resume discussions next year. On whose behalf is Harry speaking? Clearly he's speaking on his and Meghan's behalf. We want money! We want power! We want fame! That's what we want, and we're prepared to do anything to get it. Let's jump through the hoops. Oh, you, you look interesting. You look as if you're someone I could use. <laughs> Mr. First Nation, uh, representative, my heart beats for all you First Nation people. I'll be your envoy. I'll be your special envoy. I will intercede on your behalf. <laughs> mm. This is the height of irresponsibility. But let me continue. On whose behalf is Harry speaking? Whom is he representing? Rescue chickens? Perhaps he would like to make crown reparations out of the Spotify money they grifted. It makes me sad that he seemed to do some trusting First Nations leaders into thinking he has some kind of royal role or clout. From my perspective, this is an attitude of self-serving colonial consumption all over again. He's been dining out on his family, including his late mother, and the monarchy for the past four years. He's now dining out on the First Nations people. Well, I congratulate you because I've had many of these comments, but yours is absolutely hammering home the point. You know, 
there's evidently talk of Harry possibly becoming the Viceroy. <laughs> Viceroys don't exist anymore, by the way. In Australia or Canada. Well, I know he mooted for a while the idea of going to South Africa as the Governor General. Mega didn't want it. <laughs> All those people! work to survive life isn't about survival it's about thriving and i'm gonna thrive i mean south africans eh, unless it's the oppenheimers what well, not a chance no 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 i don't want it no 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 The cynicism, the self-aggrandizing, puffed up self-importance, the opportunistic way in which they take advantage of people's innocence, hopes, expectations and naivety is, in my opinion, reprehensible. Harry has no role to play in the royal family. Harry can propose himself till he's blue in the face for a special envoy role. It's never going to happen. I have spoken to people and they have said it will never happen. Harry is persona non grata. He is finito. He is a pariah. They don't want to have anything to do with him in an official capacity. But it plays well. It gets people talking. He manages to convince the gullible that he is more important than he is. And of course, he, they make sure it's leaked to the press. I actually think they are really malignant and dangerous people, both Harry and Meghan. But in this instance, we're not speaking about Meghan, we're speaking about Harry. What? I'll tell you. Somebody said to me, anything coming from Harry is something nobody officially wants to touch. Let's leave it at that. Lalor Alva says... The dresses that Meghan Markle wore these three days at the Invictus Winter Games. One person took the time to calculate each piece that she wore for the three days. Two per day. She estimated that $91,000 were spent and left out some pieces that she couldn't identify. Plus lodging, transportation and food. The calculation shoots up more than $150,000. What a shame. I would like to know how much monetary benefit they contributed to Invictus. Well, because Invictus has Harry and as uh, its royal patron, and because Invictus started at Buckingham Palace, well, actually, technically, it was Kensington Palace, under the aegis of William as well, 
and with the encouragement of the palace operation in total, it has been prestigious. And there's no doubt that Harry's involvement helped to popularize it and get it off the ground. And Harry's involvement was not the only thing, of course, that got it off the ground, because he did very little except show up. It's all the people at the palace who worked, and William donated a million pounds. It's a good cause, and I actually think Harry, on his own, without Meghan, is tolerable. Of course, not when he does things like, oh, I'm going to be your special envoy. I'm going to get reparations for you. You know, my children are people of color and we want reparations. I, I think we all deserve reparations because I'm now a person of color. Mm. Mischief making of the highest order. But if he can be saved off from Meghan, I think that the Invictus Games connection profits Invictus Games what but increasingly less and less. What would profit the Invictus Games far more at this point would be to have the Tyndalls. Mike Tyndall and Zara Tyndall are both definitely good athletes. And I think it would be tremendously helpful if they took over the patronage and possibly her mother could become the royal patron and they could become the other two patrons. I don't think any of that is going to happen, I have to tell you. Harry's going to cling on for dear life to Invictus and he's going to keep on causing trouble. And Meghan is going to keep on flaunting her frowsy self all over the place. Look at me. I'm just so fabulous. I mean, did you check out my winter whites? <laughs> a girl's got to suffer <laughs> for her vanity. Mm. Courtney Gare says, Anthony Hopkins, the actor, is no longer Sir Anthony Hopkins since becoming an American citizen. He had to give that title up. Some Americans should know this, some Brits as well. Thank you very much, Courtney Gale. If Harry becomes an American citizen, he has to renounce his British titles. He cannot become an American citizen even if he remains a British citizen, without renouncing his titles. He can't do what King Michael of Romania did. I crossed my fingers and pretended it didn't really happen when it did. Once you make a renunciation, it is absolute. There's no way back from it. If Harry becomes an American citizen, he ceases to be Prince Henry of the United Kingdom, Duke of Sussex, Earl of Dumbarton, Baron Killeal. He ceases to become anything royal or titled. He becomes Mr. Henry Windsor. He cannot say, well, I renounce them in America, for America, but not generally. It, a renunciation is an 
absolute apt. It's not, I crossed my fingers and pretended it. I, I didn't really mean all of it. I just meant part of it. No, you know, you can't have a renunciation that works in one place and not another. There are some things that are absolutes. One of them is renunciation. Another is virginity. Silver Crow Song says, what I find interesting is the whole, we will not be broken statement. Usually these sorts of things are said when people are minimizing things. Nothing to see here. The fact they think we Americans need an American branch of the royal family. Nope. We fought a revolution to prove that point. Their blind egotism is amazing, but consistent with their self-admitted drug use. I think I need a Coke, a cola in brackets. No. Aurora, wake up, honey. I was going to send Aurora for some Coke. But she says she's not waking up, so sorry. And Nikki's on the other sofa across from us, so I won't bother with Nikki either. Well, yes. This is the defiance of a spoiled child. Harry and Meghan say they won't be broken. What they're saying is actually they won't learn. What they're saying is they've made no errors. Everybody who has responded adversely to their activities is at fault for failing to appreciate what their message is. Because, and their message is Look at us, we're so wonderful. We're just marvelous people. We are fabulous. We know better than you. We're royal. We can preach to you. You shouldn't be going on holidays by plane or car. However, we're gonna fly by private jet everywhere. You deserve nothing and we deserve everything because we are the great us and you are the little you. That's really their message, in my view. And anything to the contrary is padding. They are puffing themselves up and padding out the message. One act of compassion at a time, as we plunge the knife in. Family is all, as long as we don't have to associate with ours. Illness brings families together, but not where ours will be concerned. Mm. And as for they will not be broken, they are absolutely right. They are never going to learn. It is their tragedy. They are not capable of being taught to the extent that they will learn. She learned. She knew until she got with him. She knew how to hustle those buns and work that everything I'm so fat I'm, I'm so genuine we get enthusiastic and how dare you talk when I want to talk the mask would slip but she was extremely positive and enthusiastic and ostensibly and superficially cooperative despite being extraordinarily pushy and uncooperative 
when she didn't get her own way. But then she understood, mm, I better stop and stopped until she linked up with him. Since when it's been folly adieu and folly de grandeur in, in the most extreme manner. They are blindly egotistical and it is amazing. And yes, it is consistent with their self-admitted drug use. You know, I remember when I was young, friends of mine would say, oh, try this, it's going to blow your mind. I used to say, thank you very much. The one thing I need is my mind and not blowing it. Some of them blew theirs. Pretty sad. Others never achieved their full potential. I can think of very few friends of mine who had lives that were more difficult than mine. And many of them, the ones who were chill man, be cool, have not fulfilled their potential. Well, I flatter myself in thinking that I have actually managed to make sweet lemonade out of lemons. But that is because you need a clean and a pure mind and you also need a good heart. If you don't have one or the other or both, you're never, never going to achieve your potential. And Harry and Meghan saying they will not be broken. Remember Meghan said she's she -ra, rebel princess. <laughs> she always was a rebel. She always was dogmatic and problematic, but she had charm and she could be cooperative. People who've known her all her life say success absolutely changed her for the worst. And the more successful she became is the worse she became. It happens with people. Some people, failure suits. Other people, success suits. Hustling and trying to achieve something suited Megan because at least then she had to pose as a halfway decent human being. She doesn't have to know. She is in full rebellious flight and fight. And so is he. She's encouraged him. And she has fallen into the trap that the Duchess of Windsor fell into in thinking that because you are linked to a prince or a king, that you are more potent and powerful than you actually are, and that he is more potent and powerful than he actually is. A good warrior knows his strengths and his weaknesses. And the same applies to a sensible human being, especially American totty that has linked up to dumb British princes. Gwendolyn Knox says, you don't want to give it to them, Lady C. Make them pay $22,000 and the funds can go <laughs> to the upkeep of Castle Goring. And we're going to end on this light note. 
because evidently it's been in the newspapers that I uh, acquired certain websites to block Harry and Meghan from accessing them. And I think that it's an absolute disgrace that Harry and Meghan are using Sussex.com as if they are entitled to supersede the county of Sussex. I have nothing against them using Duke and Duchess of Sussex. So since that was available, I bought others like officialsussex.com and I bought uh, Duke and Duchess of Sussex.co.uk. But anyway, I'm uh, one of the headlines in the mail, I think it is, said, Harry and Meghan are accused of hijacking the Sussex name for their website. As Lady Colin Campbell reveals, she's bought domain names for other Sussex-related sites. I bought several. Several. And many people have congratulated me for doing so. I felt that... So many people complained about it to me that I should do something and I've done something, but I offered them the Duke and Duchess of Sussex.co.uk website for nothing and I would give it to them for nothing, but they have to take off Castle Goring and uh, it has to have nothing to do with me. I would be delighted to give it to them. I wouldn't charge them for it. I would be doing the County of Sussex and the people of Sussex a service. So that's really why. But thank you, Gwendolyn Knox, for saying that I should benefit from it. We will all benefit from it. If they do it, they're not going to do it. I knew they weren't going to do it. They will never do it. They are too arrogant, impertinent and dumb to understand that a degree of humility is indicative of a well-grounded and developing soul. If you have no humility, you are spiritually bankrupt, no matter what other virtues you possess. And Harry does not possess that many virtues, nor does Meghan. However, Let's leave things as they are. I did it really to be naughty and to make a point and also to block them because I have the official Sussex site. They only have the ordinary Sussex site and that I would not give them, nor would I sell it to them for a penny less than a million pounds. That means they're not going to want it. So it's fine. It's fine. And that I would sell them for a million pounds because I'm sufficiently worldly and cynical to take the view if they're going to actually, you know, stop to think of it. Would I really? I'm not quite sure. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I wouldn't. It's an entertaining thought, though, don't you think? Of course, life is full of these things. Would I, won't I, if, if, if. Suppose, suppose your elbow was your nose. Remember that when we were children? Well, but definitely they can have Sus Duke and Duchess of Sussex.co.uk for nothing. And on that note, I'll say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. Please keep the questions and comments coming in so I will know what you would like us to be speaking about. Okay? Thank you. God bless. 
And if you have truly enjoyed this, would you care to like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and Godspeed.